So round three, I'm paired against Grandmaster Enrico Saviano, and, who's of course a very, very strong player. And um, I actually won against Enrico in my last tournament, the Golden State Open, um, but my overall score against them is still very, very uh, awful. Uh, he's beaten me like north of 10 times, and a lot of those games I'm like playing black and he's just kind of like hammering me <laughs> every every single game. Um, so this is definitely a very important game because we're uh, both on two out of two, and I wanted to make sure to at least uh, hold this one. He plays e4, I went for the Sicilian, and um, generally uh, Enrico has always been a c3 Sicilian player, but here he goes knight f3, e6, and now he plays c3 in this position, so definitely still very much in his uh, comfort zone. Uh, I play knight f6, e5, knight e5, bishop c4, d6, and now castles. So normally white plays d4 at some point, I was expecting it maybe here, um, or of course on, on the previous move, this is very, very typical, and I'm definitely used to, to playing these positions uh, quite a bit. Um, but the way he plays it, I was really just not familiar with, castles, and um, now I'm like trying to figure out what to do. I mean, there's lots of natural moves like knight d7, knight c6, bishop e7, d takes e5, but yeah, it wasn't obvious what, what black should play. Um, one move that I didn't want to make was knight c6, because then after d4, we get this position, which is of course totally fine for black, but generally in these positions, I do like putting the knight on d7, because I think it's a better square for the knight, it doesn't get in the way of the bishop on b7, then you can transfer to f8 and so on. Um, so I wanted to avoid that one. And I ended up playing bishop e7, which I thought was perfectly fine. Um, if I could do it again, I would probably just take on e5 here, forcing white probably to play knight takes e5, now bishop e7, and yeah, this position I think absolutely fine for black. Um, white pretty much has to play d4 either here or, or maybe rook e1 first, but then black will just take. If white takes with the queen, I think there's really, really nothing there. I was like, you know, I can castle, we'll go bishop f6 and stuff. Um, and if white takes with the pawn, then castles and knight c6. Uh, this is kind of well known and, and black is supposedly uh, totally fine in this position. Like white can take bc, but then the, the weakness on d4 is definitely felt. Black goes like queen b6, rook d8, bishop f6, e5, bishop a6 here, and eventually even c5 to just trade off the c pawn. And yeah, generally speaking, black is, is totally fine here. Um, so yeah, I think that's maybe the most solid choice, but I end up going bishop e7, which is fine. Um, e takes d6, queen takes, uh, mainly just because I didn't want to move the bishop a second time, and, and this made sense to just support the knight on d5. Uh, now white played d4, and I decided to take. I don't think this is forced. I think a move like knight d7 is also totally playable, but yeah, during the game, I thought they're both fine, and eventually I just felt like this was a little bit simpler. So I take on d4, uh, knight takes d4. I thought maybe white might play queen takes d4, and uh, I think I was just gonna castle here, because g7 is under attack. Bishop f6 is also maybe possible, um, but I think castles is simple enough, and I was thinking maybe we get some position like this um, with, uh, black getting the, the IQP, either like this or even after queen takes d5. This one I was more or less willing to play. Normally I don't like uh, playing with this uh, pawn, but here I feel like I have the light squared bishop, I can come out, bishop g4, and this felt reasonably uh, active enough for black that I was willing to go in for this one. Um, but instead white goes knight takes d4. And now it felt actually kind of like a critical moment because I realized white wants to play either knight b5 and go after the queen and um, threatening the, the d5 knight possibly, or knight f5 might be a move as well, with the idea that black is forced to go e takes f5 and then white can win the knight on d5 and argue that the doubling of black's pawns, you know, is kind of a serious, um, serious problem. Because strategically, yeah, we would be losing our, our majority. Um, so eventually I realized I needed to just castle here. <laughs> I just needed to focus on development. I could play a6 and stop knight b5, but then after knight f5 takes, takes, it seemed like white was just going to be uh, at least a little bit better here, and this a6 move is not necessarily so useful. Um, and so I decided the extra tempo to castle would be much more valuable. Um, so I castle here, and on knight b5 I realized this wasn't so dangerous. I think I was just going to play queen c5. Uh, looking to play a6 next, and if white doesn't really develop any kind of special initiative, then black is maybe even more than fine, like a6, b5, bishop comes out to b7, knight d7, and all the pieces are, are in the game. So I thought maybe white has to play like bishop takes d5 just to try to get something, 
then I can even take on b5, let's say bishop f3, bishop d7, trying to play bishop c6 and neutralizing white's light square bishop. Um, then like a4, queen b6, a5, queen a6. This is where I kind of like stopped my calculation and I thought, yeah, it looks fine for black and yeah, still I don't really see any real problems. The bishop comes out to uh, c6, knight d7 and seems totally fine. So this one I thought was okay. And instead white played knight f5, which was kind of the other move. And this one I wasn't sure, but I felt like I'm I'm really not going to be much worse uh, if, if at all. Um, so after e takes f5, bishop takes d5. Queen takes d5 was also possible, but then I think black can either go queen c7 and just back it up and threatening like bishop e6, knight c6, and having a reasonably active position. Or I thought going for the end game is probably fine as well, like knight c6, and then like bishop e6 here, rook d8, and here I thought also black is getting some, some reasonable uh, uh, peace activity in return for having these uh, these double pawns, which are definitely kind of, uh, you know, serious strategic uh, weakness. Um, but uh, yeah, instead we get bishop takes d5. Now I played rook to d8. Um, I think knight c6 is preferred by the engine. And there was actually a game before um, where black did play knight c6, bishop e6, and, and equalized very, very easily here. I decided to start with rook to d8 because I thought I actually wanted to force white to play c4. The truth is that white is probably playing c4 no matter what here to support the bishop, but I felt like this is something I should try to uh, induce. Um, because if bishop f3, then I can go for the end game, and I thought that's probably fine, but also queen c7 maybe is even better, just keeping the pieces on the board. And then like bishop e6, knight uh, c6, bishop c4 is of course the threat here, and yeah, I feel like black is just getting um, just very, very healthy play. Uh, instead, c4 is played. Bishop e6, now using the pin on the d-file, so white can't really take on b7, because queen takes d1. Uh, white played knight c3, knight c6, and I basically realize I'm, I'm more or less just in time here, um, and not really risking too much. Um, if knight to b5, I think I was just going to drop back like queen b8, and then I want to play a6, and the bishop is still pinned, so this is kind of uh, not really pleasant for white. Instead, white played queen f3, which I thought was very logical, looking to go bishop uh, f4. And um, here I went into the tank a bit, but I, I ended up finding a pretty nice uh, solution. So I go knight to d4, hitting the queen. Um, white plays queen to d3. I think, yeah, most logical move, just attacking the knight. I thought maybe queen g3 is also possible, but then I can uh, trade, and I have um, ideas of just playing like rook c8 and, and hitting this one, and if bishop e3, there's knight c2. Um, so I thought I'm absolutely fine in this endgame, and in fact... Uh, looking fairly active. Um, so queen d3, uh, I felt was was more or less forced. So here, if I play something like bishop f6, just defending the knight, then the problem is that the b7 pawn is hanging, so I can just get away with uh, with taking this one. Um, so on queen d3, I realized I can actually just go back knight c6. And so with this move, I defend the b7 pawn, but I also threaten knight to b4, which is kind of uncomfortable for white because that hits the queen and the bishop and white definitely doesn't want to give up the bishop for uh, the knight. And if white plays something like a3, this is really kind of slow because then black gets time to play like rook c8 and knight e5, bishop f6, and if anything, black is the one uh, that's getting the uh, initiative here. And the point is that white's queen on d3 is not as good as on f3 because then there's no uh, bishop f4. And so the bishop doesn't isn't able to develop to its best square and yeah, black is just getting um, some really nice counterplay. So after knight c6, white ends up playing queen f3, uh, repeating the position. And um, I thought a little bit about, you know, playing something else here. Um, you know, my other big candidate move was to go knight e5. But on this one, after queen to e2, I really just didn't see how I'm going to continue. Um, b7 pawn isn't really hanging here because of c4, but white does want to play like bishop f4. And if I play something like knight g4, then okay, just g3, and the bishop will come out to f4 anyway. And yeah, I didn't think black was actually... Uh, in time here, and then white is getting the rook very quickly to d1, and once I saw that the rook is coming to d1, I realized I, I didn't want, you know, any any part of this. Um, so, yeah, I end up just going knight d4, and queen d3, knight c6, and we actually just end up repeating moves here, and uh, agreeing, agreeing to a draw after uh, queen f3. And it was actually quite a logical repetition, because neither side really has a great way to keep the game going. Um, like after knight d4, you know, the queen can go back to d1, but that's that's where it came from. Then black can again just return knight c6. 
um, and the after queen d3, knight c6, because I'm threatening all these moves like knight b4, knight e5, bishop f6, rook c8, and so on. Well, it's just not really in time to play like a3 and, and still uh, develop everything. Um, so yeah, this ended up being a pretty solid draw. I was actually happy to hold this one with black without having too many difficulties against a uh, strong player. And uh, yeah, this put me on two and a half out of three uh, for the tournament.